just getting a delivery here. Welcome back. We got a new toy. It's a oh, it's a bit sunny, I don't can't really see anything. It's an old Lansing FODR6 diesel. Uh, got some issues. Mainly electric because nothing really works. Uh, the brakes are bad. I almost hit the workshop. Uh, handbrake works, but uh, the parking brake works, but uh, the battery was dead. But the main issue we have is actually, I need to get to the other side here. It runs and drives, it's just uh, been neglected a little bit. The tilt cylinder is leaking. If one of these nuts is split, so it's pouring out fuel. Look what they did with the return line here. It, it's just not right. Uh, makes no sense to me. Anyway, um, yeah, that needs addressing. So we need to take that line out and see if we got a, a compression fitting which fits that injector. The problem is it doesn't rev far enough, so it, you can only move very slow. Lifting works fine, but uh, the engine has no power. Uh, it's got a lot of blow-by, what I've seen. Maybe the crankcase ventilation is blocked. Oil was low, hydraulic fluid is very low. Uh, it, le it leaks like a sieve, but it's mainly just maintenance issues. It's just got long forks. They came with it, no side shift. Must looks okay. Must cylinder is a bit wet, but yeah. What do you expect, this thing is? I think mid 70s, 75, maybe 77, something like that. Um, the company has been bought out by um, Linde uh, many years ago. It's a bit of love, and uh, then I think it's okay. So let's uh, fix the pressure issue. We've got a piece of cardboard underneath because this thing is really. Uh, yeah, the best thing is actually the fuel tank. Um, I was running out of fuel just when I drove in. And I thought, okay, no fuel. So I filled up the fuel tank and I still couldn't pump it. And then I realized this is the fuel tank. So it's an oil canister <laughs> filled with uh, fuel. And that's where the fuel line goes. So once we figured that out, we got it working. Uh, the reason I bought it, despite its shape, um, is because it was very close. It was only 60 miles away and the uh, transport was only 260 pounds, about $300, which is quite cheap for moving a almost four ton forklift. Um, yeah, it's a transport company from Bransley. They did a good job, they moved it over, they even helped me to start it up because it was uh, a bit of a problem and uh, well, it's, it seems doing something, it just needs maintenance. I don't think it has seen any maintenance for quite a long time. So, yeah, it's a short mast, I wanted that, because I have some overhead lines here. And there will be another one over there. And uh, so I don't want a high mast. Oh, we need to address a couple of things. For whatever reason, it doesn't go fully down. There is a bit of an issue. It just stops about an inch or half an inch before the bottom stop. There was some garbage in it, so it's going down a bit further now, but it still doesn't go fully down. <coughs> yeah, the, the long forks are, mm, they could have been longer because I want to use it as a car lift as well. Because I, I was thinking buying a car lift, but there's no space here, and uh, wherever I go, it's, it's in the way, so this is a portable car lift as well. Because the Volvo, you can't do anything on that car without a lift. The cheap is easy, you just creep under it and chop down. But with the Volvo it doesn't work. Uh, tires are air. I thought they're solids, but they're not. They're air tires. Makes them easier to replace. It's split rims, so you gotta be careful. 
Um, once I fix the fuel line, we're going to fire it up, and uh, because I can't run it, it's just pouring diesel everywhere. Uh, that rack is full from driving from from the from the road down here, and uh, it's just awful. Um, we already moved the pallet of coal, so it does work. But yeah, one of the problems is if you go into forward, it doesn't click. It does click on reverse, but it doesn't click on forward because all the stuff down there is has a lot of play. That's one of the problems which need addressing. So we need to take that floor pan out somehow and uh, look at that. So that's our problem here. Took the racks off, then not just split. I don't know if the rest is here. So we need to see if we can find something. Uh, I think these are these are flared on the on the lines itself, which is which would be bad. Uh, I got a Kubota engine here, but I don't think they are the same thread because the Japanese so they metric this is a Perkins engine. It's gonna be imperial. Uh, all right. Let's get that fuel line out and see what we can do. Well, we found one with the right thread. Not too bad. The problem is I need an olive which fits. And I don't have one of this size. Got dozens of olives here. But none fits here. Let me let me see what I can find here. Yeah, the more I look at the fuel system, the more I think it's the hell on earth. Look at that. That's where the fuel line comes here, and that's the return here. God knows who did that. That's a flexible pipe here going into the pump. Uh, yeah, to get the injection line off, you need one of these. Because otherwise you're not having fun. Uh, Providing you get there, uh, maybe just about. So, because if you if you use something else, you may crack them, and uh, that's what they are for. More fancy stuff. I don't know if it's visible. But look what happens if I move the throttle. The whole top of the injector pump is moving here, and that's where fuel or oil is coming out. So, this up. Yeah, you can see it. It's just uh. yes, I said maintenance black hole. That's most of the stuff I buy. But I'm not complaining. It's uh, part of the job. If you buy cheap, you're gonna spend some time. Usually, not a lot of money. It's always time and uh, sourcing parts if it's old. But this is a Perkins engine, that's pretty much in any machine of that era. I think we found why the lever position is. But if you watch this, you see that? There's a bunch of bolts missing over there. So the whole thing is moving. So the, um, the front panel sits too low and that's the reason why you can't go forward. It, it, because going downwards is the same because the the pivot point is here in the panel, but look at that, that's when I pull on the valve, because you see these rods here, and then I pull the whole thing off, up with the, um, <laughs> alright, well, <coughs> mechanics from hell, it should, yeah, I think, it's these little problems and that's the reason why they didn't use them anymore. Let's, let me see if the bolts are broken or if they're just not there. This is a good one, brake doesn't work. Guess why? Brake fluid whatsoever. So there is a good possibility that we have a leak somewhere. 
Uh, we'll chop it up and see what happens. We don't know right now. If it drains away, we know we've got a leak, otherwise it's just gone. Well, it's not as simple as filling brake fluid because this end of the line here, I don't know if you can see that down here, it's cut. I think this is probably the, the brake diverter and bleed, but it's cut. God knows why. Makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the reason why the brakes don't work. Because if there is no connection, it's not gonna work. Okay. So that means making a few brake lines here. I think I got them. I got these sort of nipples here. Why is it taken out here? Yeah, it's, it's just the diverter valve taken out. Can't believe that. We'll come back when we have some further progress. Um, that's it for now. Uh, yeah, what else? Yeah, that should be it for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.